to Aging Matters, a program featuring individuals who talk about aging-related issues of interest to older adults and their families. I'm Cheryl Beversdorf, your host. Assistive technology helps older adults and persons with disabilities perform activities that might otherwise be difficult or impossible. For many older adults, assistive technology makes the difference between living independently and needing home health or long-term nursing care. Today, my guest is Sonia Scheibel, Assistive Technology Acquisition and Aging Coordinator of the Virginia Assistive Technology System, known as VATS, a program administered by the Virginia Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. Sonia will talk about ways assistive technology can be useful in older adults' lives and help them remain longer in their homes. She will also talk about the VATS program and how older adults in Virginia can use its services. Later in the program, Sonia will demonstrate a number of assistive technology items and common devices often needed and used by older adults. So welcome, Sonia, and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's get started by having you explain what is assistive technology for older adults? What does, what does that mean? So assistive technology is really just a fancy term, and I like to simplify it by just saying it's just really cool gadgets and gizmos and services that help make life easier. Okay, and it's, it can be a lot of different things. It can be a whole lot of different things, correct. Okay, and that's what, that's what we're going to learn about today. And give us a little bit of understanding about the kinds of health conditions that might be apparent or be existing in older adults that could uh, increase the likelihood of, of using assistive technology. What are some possibilities? Well, some very common uh, health conditions would be arthritis, um, loss of hearing, Parkinson's, stroke, um, any kind of um, visual impairments like macular degeneration would be, uh, th those are the most common. Uh, one thing to, to, to note is you don't have to have a health condition to use assistive technology, however. Um, for instance, I use an electric, um, uh, excuse me, I use an electric uh, can opener. Uh, I could use a manual one, but I just prefer to use electric, and that is a, a cool gadget that helps me to be, make something easier for me. Uh, we all, lots of people have Alexa in their homes to turn on lights, to turn on different, uh, different appliances, etc. They don't necessarily need that, but it just makes life easier. So you don't have to have a, med a, men a medical condition to use assistive technology. Okay, and so it probably would surprise all of us is that we use assistive technology and don't even know it. Exactly, would you, exactly. Would you agree? I, I prefer to uh, talk text instead of texting with my thumbs just because it's easier for me. I could do it, but I think a lot of us find that it's just easier to talk. So there's a lot of technology out there today that a lot of us use, like you said, that we don't even, we wouldn't use the term assistive technology, even though that's what it is. Even our computers are part of assistive exactly, technology. Exactly, exactly. So. It's a cool gadget, cool gizmos that we use. And if, could you explain a little bit more for those conditions that we talked about, like arthritis mm -hmm. or stroke or some visual or hearing impairment, how does assistive technology help these older adults with these conditions? Well, basically what it does is it makes whatever task is difficult for them to perform easier. So it makes them be more successful and safe in whatever they're trying to do. So that's really how it helps them. So it's not so much the impairment that they have, but the task that they're having difficulty with that they focus on. And I would assume that it probably also helps them live more independently. Absolutely. They don't have to rely on other people to get the job done, whatever that might be. Right. It helps them to live more independently, but it also gives them dignity. Okay. Very important for mm -hmm. older adults. So let's hear about the organization that you represent, the Virginia Assistive Technology System, which, as I said in my intro, the short 
version is VATS? Right, right. There's many acronyms in the, the world of, of government. So VATS is um, administered through the Virginia Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services, like you had said. Mm -hmm. And uh, we basically uh, provide three different services. So we provide a, demonstration, a device demonstration and loan program, uh, a information and assistance program, as well as a um, equipment exchange and reuse program. So these are the kind of the three main uh, departments in, in VATS? It's correct, it's the three main services that we provide. Okay, well let's, let's start for, with the first one, the device demonstration and loan program. That sounds like a pretty important program for older it's, adults. It is, it's a great program. So we have a loan library, what we call a loan library in, for the state of Virginia, and it's located in Fairfax, Virginia, and it's full of all kinds of different pieces of equipment, adaptive equipment. So you can come in and, and tell us what it is you're having problems performing and we can uh, find out what uh, devices might help you and let you try them and then you can take them home for a couple weeks and try them at home so that way you can like we said try before you buy see if you're going to use it see if it's going to work for you consistently and then that way you can make the decision if you want to make that investment and actually purchase an item. And I assume that you have staff members there that help you. I mean, once you come in to say, well, gee, I really need this, or I guess it could also be like an adult, um, a, the adult person or a caregiver that is coming with the older adult? Correct. So what you're going to do is when you come in for the device demonstration and loan, you're going to get hands-on, right. uh, but it's going to be, um, the, the meeting will be with an assistive technology specialist. All right. So that person will be helping you. They're, they're an expert in that field, and they'll be helping you to find what would work best for you. And this other, uh, the, the second kind of department, or the second department here, Device Exchange and Reuse Program. What is that? So the Device Exchange and Reuse Program is um, basically neighbors helping neighbors here in Virginia. So it's going to be someone who needs an item is going to be connected with somebody who has an item to donate. So for example, Mrs. Smith needs a hospital bed and contacts VATS and lets them know, hey, do you know of anyone who has a hospital bed? And then Mr. Jones contacts VATS and says, I have a hospital bed I don't need anymore. I'd love to donate it. So what VATS does is connects the two together and lets them take care of the details. But that's a, a neighbor helping a neighbor with, with equipment. So that's how that works. And I suppose that perhaps uh, if people just don't need a, uh, an item before, it's better to put it into this program rather than just throw it away. Exactly, exactly. It, most equipment doesn't get used for very long, so it's in perfectly good condition, and it's just, it's horrible to see it get thrown away when there's so many people out there who can't afford it or doesn't have insurance to cover that for them, that there's all kinds of reasons why they can't get that equipment that you have maybe sitting in your garage or in your attic waiting for someone to use. All right. Well, how about the Information and Assistance Program? So Information and Assistance Program is really what it says. It's um, you call um, VATS and say, I, have a, I need to figure out how to do this, or I need to find this. And we try to help you with resources to help you accomplish that. An example might be, I need um, a, a service dog and I'd have no idea how to go about that. You could call VATS and we could just give you some resources that would help you get started on that and be able to be successful in, in getting what you need. This is so important and because people need resources and mm -hmm. they don't know, all of a sudden they have a situation and they don't know how to figure out where the program is or in this case, the, the kind of equipment. So. Next question would be, how can Virginia older adults participate in these programs? What, what do they need to do? Well, to participate in this program is very simple. All you need to do is either call our main line and leave a message, or you can go onto our website at www.vats.org, and all of the information is on the website. 
Now, are there any requirements that are needed for the, uh, I mean, do you have to be a certain age or? We help everyone from age zero to 199, whatever, whatever. Uh, all Virginians are um, able to get help from our services. There's no requirements. So um, if you're in need or if you know someone in need, it's, it's a great program to contact and get some help. I guess. And let's let's kind of just get into the more specifics explain what are some kinds of assistive technology devices that are most commonly used by older adults what I, we're going to be seeing some of these later but just give some examples to how it helps people to live better lives so there are so many assistive technology devices, so many cool gadgets and gizmos out there for you that you will use all day long. So you can start from when you get up in the morning. There's dressing devices, there's dressing stick, maybe a sock aid to help you. Then you move into the kitchen. There's sock aid to get your... Sock aid to help you put your own socks on. All right. Um, and that's just one big dignity <laughs> thing right there is being able to put your own socks on right. uh, that we just don't think about when we can do it on our own. So then you move into the kitchen and there's all kinds of devices to help you eat independently, which is another form of dignity that you want is just to be able to feed yourself. And then working in the kitchen, lots of people like to cook their own meals. Um, also just filling your time. There's all kinds of um, act, uh, different adaptive equipment for any kind of sports and, and recreational activities. There's uh, adaptive equipment, just getting in and out of your house. Um, using a ramp is a form of adaptive equipment. Being able to get in, your, in and out of your car or just even in the community alone, being able to get around, it's all, there's all kinds of devices for all kinds of activities. And we're going to be seeing some of these that you use um, on a daily basis. Um, Correct. Very shortly. So, yes. Anyway, the Virginia Assistive Technology System offers a broad array of gadgets, gizmos, and other assistive devices to help older adults in Virginia live more productive lives. Sonia will show us samples of these devices and explain how to use them. So let's watch. Okay, so I'm going to show you now some of the assistive technology or cool gadgets and gizmos that's out there on the market for you today. I'm just going to start over here with this light. So lots of times it's difficult to turn on little knobs, little the, the, the arthritis or for whatever reason just that small manipulation is difficult for you, then you can get a device, it's just a small little thing here that you plug into the outlet and then you plug your lamp into it and if your lamp has any metal on it whatsoever, it can even be metal around the base, all you do is touch that metal and now that light lamp has turned into an on off switch uh, that's just touch so you don't have to turn the little knobs anymore. So that's kind of a nice little device to have for anybody, even if you don't need that. The next device that we have is for gardening. So it's just a nice little um, ergonomically uh, correct um, a spade. And then what you can do is you can take this add-on piece and put it in there. And then that just helps with your grip as well. And it helps you with the forearm to help uh, give you a little extra leverage. So that's really nice if you're one-handed. It works perfectly for that. There's also uh, many other pieces that hook on. So there's all kinds of different gardening tools that are made just like this. And there's long-handled and short-handled. This is the Reacher. Everyone knows about the Reacher, right? So this is a special Reacher that I really prefer. This one not only grips and grabs like all other Reachers, right? But it has a, a locking mechanism in them. So you can push down this switch and it's gonna lock and hold what you're lifting. So that way you have an extra hand now. You can let go with this hand. You don't have to keep that grip on there, which is really hard. It takes a lot of strength to do that. But now you have another hand you can get under here and you can move this hand however you need to help you lower down whatever it is that you've, you're grabbing. Another item that, uh, another thing about this that's great is the fact that it has this extra little piece, which is just a nice lever for you. This is um, a, a hand scrubber. So if you've had a stroke, for instance, and you only have one hand that's functional, then what happens is you can, the good hand can wash the hand that's not so functional anymore, but 
it's hard to wash this hand because your non-functional hand really can't help you with that. So what's really nice is you have this device. It just has these simple little suction cups on the bottom that you can put down and then um, you've got, it's not going to go anywhere, it's not going to move on you and you can use your good hand and you can really scrub your fingernails, you can really scrub your palms and you can get this one really clean by putting some soap on there and you can really get your good hand, the one that's functioning and doing most of the work for you is the one that you really want to have clean, this will clean it for you. So that's kind of a nice little tiny device that can make a world of difference for somebody. This is called a lap pad. Oh, lap pad, excuse me. So um, weighted lap pads were originally developed for people who have autism. And it's just a calming, to calm you down or if you have anxiety to try to help minimize that. It works for people with dementia as well. You can come home and just put this pad on you and it just has a nice calming effect on you. There's many different types of uh, lap pads, lap blankets out on the market right now and they're very easy to find. There's different weights so you have to find what weight works for you but uh, it's definitely a, a calming, a, a nice device to have. So then we move into more the kitchen. Um, so this is a, called a level, lift level wear and what it does is it's nice for somebody who may have some mobility issues with their arm or their hand and wrist. So it's going to help you to it automatically adjust to the angle that you need so that food does not fall off your spoon or fork. So it just helps you with that eating and being independent with that. The nice thing is this also has a fork that will attach to it and you can unattach it and this is washable in the dishwasher. So you can get that nice and clean. Then we move over here to the double spatula. And once again, if you um, are one-handed, one hand's not functioning, but the other one is, it's nice to be able to, to grab your food and squeeze it, and that way you can easily transfer it without dropping it. Um, and uh, just helps make it safe and a little bit more convenient in the kitchen to be using the double spatula. And for flipping, um, it's just easier. This is a weighted utensil, and again, this is, this is a heavy weighted uh, spoon. They also have forks, knives, soup spoons, etc. And it just makes it really nice. If it's weighted, it's going to help with tremors. So if you have some shaking, some tremors in your hand, this will minimize the tremor if you have that uh, weight on there. This is for your microwave. It's a nice little device that you put in the microwave and you put your plate right on it or your bowl, whatever you have that you want to heat up. You stick that right in there and then when it's time to take it out, you have these nice handles that you can take whatever is in there out, be a little bit safer with holding it, and if anything spills, it just goes right into this little trough here, and this is dishwasher safe as well. Okay, then we move into this uh, trivet. So. With this trivet, it has some wheels on the bottom and it has a stopper. So what you're gonna do is use this in the kitchen for pots full of boiling water or whatever you have on the stove um, that could be a little bit heavy. So what happens is most kitchens ha have the same design. You have your stove here and then you have that L shape where you have to turn to get to your sink. So um, if you have a hot pot of boiling spaghetti um, you can easily use this trivet with its wheels and its stopper and you can put your hot pot on it and then you can roll it to the sink. So that way if you're using a walker or a cane or you're in a wheelchair, you can easily transport this over to the sink without spilling it. And then it has the stopper so once you put it down solid, it's not going to roll on you uh, and cause any accidents. So that's just a nice device to have in your kitchen as well. The last device I have here, this cool gadget, is a jar opener. So lots of times you, it's hard to open up jars and you want your jar opened now. You don't want to have to wait for somebody to come visit to open your jar for you. So we go ahead and put this jar opener on the, the jar that we're having difficulty with. And i um, just going to make sure you know it's on there really tight. Put that on there and I just hit jar open. And then these little 
devices developers here are going to squeeze the lid. And there you have it, it's opened your jar. And now that it's opened, I'm gonna hit that button and it's going to release it. So first it's gonna remove itself from the lid and then it's gonna remove itself from the jar. There you go. Okay, so um, as you can see, there are all kinds of cool little gadgets and gizmos that you can use. Again, this is just the tip of the iceberg for what's out there. Um, there are so many devices, like I said, to help you with dressing, with eating, with recreational activities, with um, cooking, with anything that you enjoy doing or anything that you have to do to be successful on your own in your home, there isn't a device out there to help you. Again, you can go to www.vats.org or call our main line to get in contact with us and we can help you find what device would work for you as well. I hope Sonia's demonstration of assistive technology devices has been useful in providing information about available resources that can improve and enhance older adults' lives. So now that we've seen all of these devices, and they looked a little like things that you could use in the home and um, kind of as part of daily living, you mentioned a little bit before the demo about what can be used for adults to stay mobile. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Of course, I was assume there's the obvious like wheelchairs and walkers and that, but tell us more. So again, you're right, there are the obvious. Um, so the ones that we all see, the cane, the, the walker. There's also items that will help you be safe when, you're, when you are mobile. And remember, mobility isn't just about walking, it's about moving from point A to point B. So okay. that would be include transferring. So you have a lot of mobility aids that are helpful in the bathroom, for instance. Like you have a tub transfer bench or a shower chair, a raised toilet seat, a bedside commode. A lot of people have bars on in their in their um, shower or in their bathtub. So those are all items that are helping you be more mobile and safe. Um, and then you can move just outside of the house, and um, a ramp is something that helps with mobility for safety. There's also items like uh, the car handle assist that we don't think about that you can use to get in and out of the car a little bit easier and a little bit safer. There is something that's called a swivel disc, which is just a simple little disc that swivels that you can put underneath you to break the friction between the fabric of the car seat or your seat at home, your kitchen chair cushion, and your, your pants. And so sometimes pivoting is really hard when you've got that friction, but you just use that little swivel disc and that makes that easy. There's also something that's called a premium seat lift. And what that is, is just a really cheaper version of a, of a seat, of a chair lift. So it, um, it's electric, you plug it in and it, you sit it on whatever chair you're sitting in and it raises you up so you can get out and then it lowers you back down so you can sit down safely and independently. So, and it's mobile. So if you're going to someone's house and you have a, a chair lift, you can use that to take with you and now nobody has to help you get in and out of that chair at your daughter's house. The other thing that we think about too is adult, uh, older adults in recreation and sports and leisure activities. Mm -hmm. I noticed on the website that, that there's a lot of things that help people to enjoy life more. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure, so um, just anything that you can do to be productive is awesome. We want you to be as independent as possible, but there's a lot of leisure time in a person's day when you're retired. And we, that's just great for mental health is to be productive and active in whatever you enjoy. So um, most, the most common kinds of activities that we get asked about for adaptive equipment is your gardening, hunting and fishing, golfing, sewing, and um, a big one is internet, the computer access. Many of us love to be on the computer, looking on the internet, checking email, and playing games. So it's important for us to really demonstrate what kinds of activities or, or get cool gadgets and gizmos are out there that can help you be independent with all of those activities as well. And on some of those sports activities, where there are 
gadgets and gizmos to help people play golf better or whatever? Oh my gosh, there are so many uh, adaptive pieces of equipment to help with golf. Really? Um, from from um, something that would help you actually go from your sitting position in your wheelchair that makes your wheelchair stand up, so you're standing but completely strapped in, um, to just the adaptive uh, golf um, clubs. Clubs, clubs. Yeah. yeah. So you have adaptive golf clubs. So there's one-handed adaptive golf clubs. So someone with one hand that maybe have had a stroke, they could still golf. So And that's just one sport. Exactly. Exactly. There's also, um, for hunting, there's some really really cool um, adaptive equipment out there for hunting. And there's clubs out there in Virginia that where other hunters help hunters with disabilities to hunt on their own. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, now that we've learned about so many of these different kinds of assistive devices, where can older adults purchase any of these assistive technology items and, and learn how to use them? Well, luckily for us, since the internet has been invented, Google has been our best friend. So you can Google, uh, go on Google and just in the search box, just put in whatever it is that you need help with. So say adaptive equipment for cooking, adaptive equipment for golfing. Um, and then a, 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 all kinds of sites will come up for you to search. You could also put in what the, men, what the medical health condition is for you. So adaptive equipment for arthritis, adaptive equipment for a Parkinson's. And again, all kinds of sites will come up and then you can search those sites and find out all kinds of equipment that's in there for you. And then you can narrow your search down by those sites as well and get more specific about what it is with eating that might be difficult for you. And are there any retail stores that also are providing this kind of equipment for? You know, um, it's, it's become so popular because all of us use adaptive equipment even if we don't need it lots sure. of times. So Walmart.com, Amazon.com, Bed Bath & Beyond, all of them have all kinds of adaptive equipment for you. So you can either look on the website or go to the store. Correct, right. correct. Usually the website has more to offer than the store, but okay. you could do either one. Another uh, thing to note is um, how to operate the equipment. Sometimes you get something and you're like, gosh, how do I use this? Mm -hmm. And reading the instructions doesn't make sense sometimes. So another friend of ours is YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and again, just type in what it is you want instructions on, there are a million different how-to videos for all of this equipment. Well, then tell us one more time, how can viewers get information and assistance regarding assistive technology devices, particularly with VATS, your, your mm -hmm. program? So again, very easy. You can call us on our main line or you can go to our website, www.vats.org. .org. And do you actually have a, a store that you, go, is, where is that store that you talked about earlier? So it's not a store. We don't actually sell or give any equipment out. We just help you to find what works for you and then you're in charge of going out for it. Okay. Um, but the, the loaning library that we have is actually in Fairfax. We're a statewide program and luckily for you all, it's, you know, for Arlington area, it's in this area. And what is that address in Fairfax? Do you know, do you I don't remember? have the address, but it's on our website. It's on the website. It's on the website and it's going to be in the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services uh, building in Fairfax. Okay. Well, I want to thank Sonia Scheibel, the Assistive Technology Acquisition and Aging Coordinator of VATS, for joining me today. This program is broadcast Sundays at 5.30 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. on Comcast Channel 69 or Verizon Channel 38 in Arlington. We're streaming live at those times on arlingtonmedia.org. Aging Matters is also on the radio. The program is broadcast every Tuesday at 2 p.m. on WERALP Arlington, 96.7 FM. And you can listen to all Aging Matters radio programs by visiting mixcloud.com forward slash aging matters or tiny.cc forward slash aging matters archive. Finally, both radio and television Aging Matters programs are posted on our Facebook page, which of course is facebook.com forward slash Aging Matters WERA. Thank you for watching the program today, 
and please join me again for the next Aging Matters show. And until then, remember, age is just a number, not a label.